series, I want to walk through the basics of Salesforce so that you can understand whether you're a marketer, sales, or if you're really going to go into marketing and sales ops, um, getting a grasp of the basics is really key and will help you in understanding sales funnels, um, integrating it with marketing systems, and so forth. So today I want to walk through the four most core objects that um, Salesforce uses and quite honestly is used in any sort of CRM out there. So uh, the idea of leads, contacts, accounts, and opportunities. So <clears throat> they're the four core objects that kind of build out the sales cycle and um, understanding how they relate to one another and what their purpose is um, is where you should start in understanding the CRM of Salesforce. So let's start with a uh, lead. It might help actually to kind of diagram this out first before I get into Salesforce itself. So uh, a lead is kind of what Salesforce has created as like the beginning and base of their system. Uh, a lead is a person. Uh, not all companies treat it that way, but if you come in here into a lead, you can see that the main, just right off the bat, the main uh, identifier of this lead is this person, a name. So uh, in this fake example, it would be Bertha. So Bertha is our lead. And, uh, you know, there's a bunch of other fields that can describe Bertha, including like her title or company, um, where she came from when she got into the database, uh, some like firmographic and other sort of data for her. And uh, <clears throat> then as, so what will happen is that some sort of process will surface this lead to a sales rep who will begin working and trying to create uh, you know some kind of sales engagement with this lead um, in this sort of out-of-the-box setup you can see this flow up here which is really just a fancy version of progressional uh, pick list so it's this lead status here and the idea is that eventually if a lead gets good enough to be what is considered a sales opportunity or like a chance to sell them something then you will convert them and that's what you know this button right here will do so if you convert a lead Salesforce prompts you to create three additional objects so if I were to click this convert button you can see that it wants me to create an account it wants me to create a contact and it wants me to create an opportunity all based off of this relationship with Bertha. So let's go back to our diagram. Um, an account will be the company that she works for. So uh, let's say my lead works at Google. Google would be the account. Um, Bertha in this case would, we can even just see and use this fake data. So her if I convert this, it wants to create this Farmers Co-op of Florida as her account, which was in the company field here. Um, the contact record is a person. So it's really similar to the idea of a lead in the sense that it's a person object. But contacts are the individuals that work at the account. Now typically you don't have all the individuals under a company in Salesforce. Uh, otherwise that data would be insane. But uh, most of the folks that are either you know using your product or pertinent to the sales process will be will be included as contacts. You want to have included as contacts under the account. So you have a company. There are individuals that work for that company who are called contacts. And then you have the sales opportunity. So an opportunity is the basically the chance you have to sell your product. So oper creating an opportunity is what most sales teams will call pipeline. And as you add more opportunities to your pipeline, then uh, you know the chance of revenue grows. So let's 
let me go find just an example of an opportunity. So in this example, this test opportunity, I've got a chance to sell a product and you can see that I hope to close it by, um, this is a little old, so I hope to close it at May, and it was worth $209. So, uh, since it's early in the stage, uh, we'll say that the chance I have to close it is low, which is why you see an expected revenue of $20, so like 10%. So, accounts are the companies, contacts work for those companies, and then opportunities are the chances to sell a product to these contacts at the account. Um, you can have multiple contacts related to an account and multiple contacts related to an opportunity because typically, especially if you're selling something with a really high annual contract value, there's multiple decision makers involved in the selling process. So um, <clears throat> one of the things that is interesting about Salesforce is this relationship between the lead and the contact. So, in this diagram, it kind of makes sense, but there are some there are some some there are some major disadvantages that at least I see. And now we're going to get into opinion, and I know there's going to be quite a few individuals that disagree with me on this, and that's okay because how you implement it for your business will be different than than other folks. But here's how I see it: there's a lot of conf there can be a lot of confusion between you know the lead object and the contact. You know, if they're both people, then what's the difference and why have them? Uh, one of the main disadvantages that, you know, really frustrates sales reps for sure is that when there's a lead database, a, a lot of sales reps, especially now, they work off accounts, right? So they get a book of accounts and they might want to know the leads or potential relationships they can build at those accounts. Well, unfortunately, leads are not associated at least out of the box with accounts. They have a company field, but that's just a text field you can see here that you can change and you know it's not related to any sort of other object. So it's difficult for sales reps when they want to pull up say you know a couple of their biggest accounts that they're working for to try and drum up some additional opportunities. They can't see the number of leads that they have at that account because the only thing that's associated to accounts out of the box are contacts. Now you can create hacks to associate leads to accounts, but then if you do that, then now you're creating kind of some of these duplicate relationships of like leads to accounts and contacts to accounts, and it starts to get messy. Um, one of the other disadvantages I see is the flow looks really nice when it goes from left to right here, but when sales opportunities uh, fall through, then what I found is that other systems and even Salesforce have a really hard time going backwards. Pointed the wrong way with the video. Going backwards. So <clears throat> let's say for example that you're trying to sell something, sales rep tries to sell something, it doesn't work out, opportunity dies. Well, they're a dead a dead contact at this account, which really means they should be a lead, right? So if we pull up a contact record here, I'll have to pull up a new one it looks like. There's no like out of the box revert or unconvert to back to a lead. And so it makes it difficult when um, you're trying to create this flywheel or you know from a marketing perspective you have nurturing um, and you're trying to pass folks back and forth along this process. I've had several conversations with marketing and sales ops people and almost all of them in their instances of Salesforce they use the lead object and they use this flow lead object to contact account and opportunity. Almost all of them said that if they could they would um, get rid of this and just use contacts accounts and opportunities. Uh, 
there there are some disadvantages for this so if you look at like what Salesforce says what are the advantages of using leads it's essentially creating two separate lists so especially with big or organizations um, there might be a you know a business development team or sales development team that works these prospects well you could keep those in a, their own area as leads and then once they're ready to be handed off to account executives you convert them to contacts and then the AEs work off accounts, contacts, and opportunities. That m makes sense, but really, uh, it's a little bit overkill because if you come, you know, the out of the box work with contacts is you can create these views here, and um, let me just show you, and then you can create filters that you know only show the contacts that need to be shown. So you could have a status field that shows leads or that's a horrible, it, it, the, the words can be confusing. You could have a, con a status field that only shows the prospects that are ready to be followed up with by your BDR team and then when they're qualified they can be moved over to the AE team. Um, so there are some other uh, advantages to using lead objects like um, campaigns and things which we won't get into now and uh, so in my case my preference is just to use these three but it's not completely detrimental to using all of these um, because most systems can handle it it's just you know how you choose to implement uh, the sales or marketing technology and you're quite honestly your own process so that's the basics of how Salesforce is built between leads, contacts, accounts, and opportunities. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments about what the purposes of those objects are, and we'll have additional videos later, maybe going in depth on like the out-of-the-box fields and what those objects.